Hello, today I built my own spot welder. There are a lot of videos on how to do this on YouTube, so I decided I give it a try. We start off by modifying an old microwave oven transformer. Uh, modifying means to remove the secondary coil. You can easily identify the secondary because it has much thinner wire than the primary coil. If you remove it from an old microwave, um, the primary coil is usually connected to the mains. During the removal you have to be very careful not to scratch the primary. Both coils are made from magnet wire which is insulated um, and if you scratch uh, the insulation from the primary your transformer is useless. As you can see here I protected the coil with some tape. The next step is to rewind the secondary coil. I use very thick uh, battery cable. This is 25 square millimeter cable or a size 3 AWG. Um, this is used to bring down the voltage. Um, the microwave transformer in its former state had about 2200 volts. Uh, with this setup uh, it decreases the voltage down to 2 or 3 volts, but as volts go down the amps go up and that is what we need for spot welding. I attach some cable ties so the secondary doesn't move around um, when it's inside the housing. After rewinding I attached an old mains cable to test the transformer. For a first test I tried to melt a thick piece of wire. Uh, this works. I don't know exactly how many amps I get out of this setup because my amp meter shuts down at about 100 amps. I think it's somewhere in the 400 to 450 amp range. I also measured the voltage. Um, it's around 2.8 volts AC, which should be safe to touch. It's now time to make the enclosure. Um, it's made from some uh, multiplex and MDF leftovers. This is my first attempt to mount the components. My first idea was to add a 12 volt fan from an old PC power supply for cooling, but I later found a 230 volts AC fan from an old microwave, which suited better because uh, there is no need for a second power supply. The next step is some woodwork. Uh, we have to make some holes and uh, drilling. Of course, if you add a fan, you also have to make some vent holes into the enclosure. I cover the large vent hole with a protective guard uh, from the PC power supply. I use some 90 degree clamps to drill holes into the multiplex wood. This is what the box looks like now. This is the 230 volts uh, AC fan from the old microwave. And this is our transformer. Since the microwave fan had no proper mount points, I tied it down using cable ties and some hot glue. The transformer is uh, very heavy, so I mounted it with four screws. This is what the enclosure looks from the inside after the wiring is finished. The idea is that the fan always blows when the unit is connected to the mains and the transformer only 
gets uh, power when the foot pedal is pressed. This is a close-up of uh, the wiring. On the bottom there is the um, AC mains, protective earth, neutral and live. Um, the orange cables go to the transformer, the white and blue cables go to the fan. Uh, to clarify, I made some drawings. The first terminal goes to the protective earth of my wall outlet. The second and third are connected to neutral and live of the outlet. Terminal 2 and 4 are connected to the primary of the transformer. Keep in mind that with this setup you have current to earth and sometimes at the primary of the transformer even if the foot pedal is not pushed, at least in my country where you can turn around the plug. Now we add the fan uh, to the terminals 2 and 3. Um, like the transformer it doesn't matter um, which order you put the cables uh, because it's AC. I connected terminal 3 and 5 with their cable. If we connect the foot pedal to terminals 4 and 5 we close the circuit and the transformer gets power. Later I decided the spot welder needed some sort of indicator lights so I added a red and a green lamp. Red lamp means welding in progress and green lamp means a unit is powered on. The green lamp is connected to terminal 2 and 3 and the red is connected to 2 and 4 like the transformer. The last step is to connect the protected earth uh, on terminal 1 to the metal parts of our spot welder. That is the iron core of the transformer and the iron core of the fan. If you have other iron parts, for example if you made an enclosure out of metal, you have to connect that protective earth to that too. Here you can see the protected earth cable connected to the iron core of the fan. Uh, additionally, uh, both terminals of the fan are uh, exposed, so I covered them with hot glue. To check if the protective earth is connected properly, take a multimeter, set it to the lowest ohm setting you have and um, then check for electric continuity between the wall plug, protective earth and um, all metal parts. In case of the transformer you may have to scratch the surface because uh, they, uh, it's also covered with some insulation like the magnet wire. If the multimeter shows somewhat around 1 ohm, then the electric continuity is okay. The next step is to make the foot pedal. The foot pedal is made from an electric push button. I measured around 8 amps on the primary side uh, and found a push button that withstands 10 amps, so this should work. In this scene I am installing the cable inside uh, the foot pedal. Um, the brown and the blue cable go to the terminal 4 and 5 inside the spot welder and the other side is connected with the electric push button. Um, there was a diagram on my push button switch and I also measured as it with my multimeter. The yellow green protective earth cable is unconnected because the switch is made out of plastic and so there's no need to connect it anywhere. With all parts assembled it's now time to check the push button. 2.8 volts as before seems to work. Finally I painted the push button in white and it's finished now. The next step is to make a welding clamp to hold the pieces together while doing a spot weld. I made uh, this clamp from two pieces of wood and a hinge. Both pieces are 30 cm long.
since I wasn't able to find a wiring terminal for a 25 square millimeter cable, I made my own from an old copper pipe. I made a few cuts into the copper pipe pieces with my angle grinder and then I smashed them with a hammer in my vise to look like this. After drilling a hole into each of them, these pieces are finished. And this is what my clamp looks like when it's finished. In the meantime, my indicator lights have arrived and they have to go in also. That means open up the enclosure again and drill some holes. The next step is to wire both indicator lights as described before. I have to admit this looks a little bit messier than before, but I had to have these indicator lights. With both lights connected, it's time for another test. Green means power on, works. And this means weld, works also. And of course, both lights need a description. After a lot of hard work, I'm finished. Now it's time to do our first real weld. Power on. For a decent spot weld, we need heat, of course, and some pressure. So keep the clamps together for a few seconds after you finished welding. And it works. Of course, when working on a project like this, I always have some ideas. First idea was to do some better electrodes, since my very thin electrodes made from copper wire um, didn't weld very well, so I made some thicker ones. To make good welds, you need uh, an even surface and a good electrical contact, so if you weld something with paint on, sand it properly. Another very important thing is, um, if you use your spot welder regularly, um, don't do more than three or four spot welds at once, let it cool down. This homemade device isn't made for 100% duty cycle, so be careful not to melt your cables. So that's all for today. If you want to build your own spot welder, uh, do it, have fun, but be careful with electricity. Thank you for watching.